change. Never smoke. Never again. Since there's no classic gun barrel opener, I'll just have to provide it myself. No classic Bond music, either. The James Bond film that is not the James Bond film. Never smoke ever, uh, whatever. The whole rights issue. I know, I know. So, no. Need to cover it here. Other than this is a remake of Thunderball. So, basically, I already did commentary for all that. I'll touch on it here, but this being Connery's final Bond film... I'm just going to talk more about that and enjoy myself as much as I can. This really is a waste. Showing Connery's face. Should have saved the reveal for a dramatic moment, not thrown it away in the credits. This being his return after 12 years, with the emphasis, the title even, being all about that, he should have had in more of an Indiana Jones entrance, coming out of the shadow, really dramatic, in bed. But this was a troubled production, sad to say. Bond Connery's final outing was a mess. Enter producer Jack Schwartzman. Totally out of his league. The power of the Schwartz was not with him. Well, maybe a different sort of power of the Schwartz. But not the kind that makes a good exoteric Bond movie. Connery and director Kirshner both locked horns with the guy. Connery himself called the whole film production a... Mickey Mouse operation. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Mickey Mouse operation. But at least the occult and the MIE had their shit together. Like the alchemy of the opening scene. Bond's house, not in order. From above, with greater knowledge, look down on those of the grid. At 3.13. All occult, all alchemical. 007 doing his eyes wide illuminated thing. And even in ritual, you must remember the divine feminine. That's what it's all about. Starting off with a simulation, a ritual, by any other theater. Don't think the lodge wasn't the theater back in the 18th century. And even before that, back in the Templar times. And before that, and all throughout history. Masonic, though these may be more, they're still the general occult favored by the military-industrial entertainment complex. The good old M.I.E. Wee wee. Now, Mr. Bond, it's time for your ritual death. And rebirth. Occult tradition. As usual in Bond films, he always sort of dies and is reborn at the beginning of the uh, initiation, meeting, ritual, movie, Mo meeting, movie, meet. yeah, that's what it is. Mm. I'll get it right. I'm a little rusty. I haven't done one of these in a while. I'll get on track. So you need to get back on the track and get back in shape, Mr. Bond. I'm working on that. I'm smoking as much as I can. Oh, of course, brainwashed. But not by this. No, no brainwashed by them. How easily it happens. 
right, Jessica? Brainwashed by Hollywood. And movies. Goddamn Hollywood. The M.I.E. with a whole evil kingdom of California. From Sad Fran shithole down to the city of Lost Angels. All of them. Uh, that's just the modern day incarnation of the occult. They're throughout history. I mean, who God knows what sort of stuffy schools M and these his crew went to. The Lodge is probably loose compared to what he had to deal with. But hey, since we're dealing with the stuffy elites behind the scenes here, let's talk more about producer Jack Schwartzman. This was his first movie. The fuck? He starts with this? But off way more than he could chew. But he's a Jew. Obviously, his name. So, obviously, he gets away with things a lot of others in the movie business wouldn't. The movie business. Mind what that really is. The M.I.E. Yeah, they let him get away with things that others won't. Or they won't let others get away with. Like being a fool with Sean Connery's signature role at stake. A fool and a tool of the M.I.E. Schwartzman's here to take the blame for the real agenda. Fancy place here, Shrublands. So it's kind of like uh, the fancy family that uh, Schwartzman married into. The Coppola family. Through Tia Shire. Yo, Adrian! The Coppola family means the MIE. Sad Fran shithole. The whole military complex there. There's your occult connection. Regardless of what Connery knows and is partial to. It's the whole agenda of the Americas. This movie was released over Columbus Day weekend. Templar Times. And set in part in Columbus territory, the Caribbean. More so in the book, but that's back to that rights issue. Alchemical colors with minimal red. Minimal warmth and love, but the black and white, the grid, let's go behind it. Enter our villainess. More on her later, but she's illuminated, she knows more. She has Solomon's key. And down into the mystery. Our Lady, that Connery used his influence to make sure she was cast. Lo pretty much all the principal cast. From Largo to the divine bitch to the divine good women there. Connery had the clout and he made sure he got good casting for such as uh, Barbara Carrera here and others throughout the show. Others such as Brumeister Exorcist Osric von Sido Blofeld Yes! Here in 1983, same year as Strange Brew, too. Wee -wee -woo -woo. And look at Spectre's awesome HQ. The alchemical colors going on, but darker. Red and gold, black and gray. Some white, some light, but very little. Illumination, yes. Knowledge, yes. But little light. This is where the villains have their game sessions. Where the only real white, the only real light comes, if not from the light, from Mr. Bigglesworth. Or whatever the kitty cat's name is. The god here. Egyptian occultism, there in New World Order. Ah. 
Very real. Who do they tap to do their dirty work? A businessman. And not just a businessman, but a billionaire businessman. Oh, if only the Muppets ever did James Bond. I know that Kermit could do Dr. Evil just fine. That'd be great. <clears throat> but uh, the uh, look who the Illuminati works with. They work with ho -ho, Mickey Mouse. Big evil billionaires like uh, Epstein. You know, Jis Lane was doing promos for Mickey Mouse back in the 80s. But we'll get to Largo later. Right now we're here at Shrublands. Which is a real place. Real nice place. You think if they send all the agents here, the bad guys would just target this place. Just wait for them here. They show up here a lot. So I was taking the tour in London, the double-deck tour in 96. You go by the, the HQ and they're like, and it's it's got this special shielding on the roof that prevents it from being detected by satellites. But it's the only building in London with that protection, so they pretty much know which one they look for. The only one that, the only part of the city that don't show up. <laughs> and hey, James Bond is a parody. Director Kirshner talks about that so much, how this is really just... Um, hey, hey, no smoking without me. It's meant to be more fun. Indiana Jones, all the way. Especially on the alchemical level. Note his lodgings. Proper alchemical colors, as always. Complete with two towers on the mantle. The obelisks. And I can't be certain, but I'm using a DVD and the image isn't the best, but the picture between them sure looks a lot like the Masonic Inner Sanctum. Wait a minute, Inner Sir Sanctum, wait. You come on into my Inner Sanctum. Come on in, my lady. Yum, yum. What have you brought? Special herbs and spices. Yeah, I locked that door. There's no escape now. Who'd want to? Woo! Nice suitcase. What, no condoms? I guess now we know how Bond plays. He's a dirty knacker, isn't he? Yeah, but it's Bond. If you're going to catch some, catch it from him. Man. But not, you ain't catch nothing from him. He's he's the pure God here. Pure as the cat. Look at his butt. Oh, um, speaking of playing. Hello. Barbara Carrera. I wasn't smoking new. No. Um, Barbara Carrera. Natasha Rambolia of the KGB. Ain't you ever seen Condor Man? Ah, nice that Barbara went from the Bond parody to the real deal. And Connery even personally approved her. Wow. And Barbara was also a Playboy cover girl. Meow. And she rough in bed, beating that dude up. I like her. I've always liked her. You know, I've always seen. I've always. I've lived with Condor Man since it came out in the theaters forty-two years ago. But I only saw Never Say Never Again for the first time, December nineteenth, twenty twenty-two. I still like her. But I like Barbara Carrera all the more now. Especially, even all the more. She was offered the role of the Bond babe in Octopussy. Coming out same year, the competitive uh, Bond film. Yeah, that rights thing. But she turned that down because she wanted to work with the Bond. Connery. Yowza. Barbara insisted on doing her own nude scenes with this old man, Connery. Refused the body double. Oh, she must have suffered. <laughs> Apparently, you know, she says doing nudes and sex scenes doesn't bother her. 
That's understandable. Doing nude sex scenes with Barbara Carrera wouldn't bother me either. <laughs> Condor man. Now you know how to call him Woody. <clears throat> That's a Disney movie. Speaking of Woody, oh, look at this emphasis on the one eye. On one eye. Just like at the end of the movie with the wink. And the beginning of the movie with all the double O eyes for hers only the queen elizabeth the first back in the days of john d the sorcerer that's where all that comes from but i've talked about all this plenty before but it's they're always emphasizing the one eye especially the illuminati servants you know they got they got to they have the knowledge that comes with the one eye, but they don't have the discipline to use it. They give into the dark side. <clears throat> and she gave in to the light side. Notice he's wearing all white, keeping her alchemy our alchemy going here. The colors, I mean, <clears throat> keeping our all chemistry going here. I mean, I mean. Yeah, something like that. I'm still at Shrublands. I'm rusty. I haven't done a James Bond commentary for weeks. I had to get back into the uh, swing of things. I mean, the swing of things. Well, he searches around the bed, first and foremost. Not the chest of drawers, not the dresser, not the, you know. No, the bed. That's where his mind goes. For people that take that exoterically, yeah, it uh, sells tickets, but what it's really about is the Divine Feminine. And I've talked about all that before. But hey, this is where he's going to find the guy's dirty secrets. And he does. Notice the, even the matches are alchemically colored. Even the weights are alchemically colored. Because all this is about transformation. The colors of transformation. Bond is transforming into a better man in every way. Physically, mentally, spiritually metaphorically metaphysically and there's the grid got to get off the grid who are we going to meet when we meet on the grid we're going to meet the big brute now that's scary man you turn a corner and pat roach is there ready to kill you <clears throat> interesting to see him here uh more meta metaphorical metaphysical meta mixing of James Bond and Indiana Jones. This is in between him getting shot, propellered, and rock crushered. <clears throat> and later on, he's that awesome uh, General Kale in Willow. Oh! Always have a spotter, dude, that wants to help you, not hurt you. A pissed off Pat Roach in his arena, the gym. This is actually very scary. This is some metaphorical scary here. I'm, metaphysical scary. I'm going to have nightmares after this. Uh, but hey, it's on now. Ding, ding, ding. Pro wrestling. James Bond has a way of getting pro wrestling into every movie. At least the Sean Connery movies. And even going so far as to fight The Rock's grandfather... Uh, using a chair for a weapon. Well, now he's using dumb. He's this is more. Uh, that was more classic wrestling. This is more uh, millen millennial wrestling, where you use every foreign object. So he doesn't have a chair, but he's got a bench. That'll do. But yeah, it's uh, we always get some pro wrestling from James Bond. So it's nice to see that amongst the James Bond formula, everything you got to have, you know, sexy women, gadgets, sexy women. Bad guys, sexy women, fights, sexy women, explosions, sexy women. Pro wrestling, got to have that too. And here we get our obligatory James Bond pro wrestling scene. I love it. <clears throat> Oof. You hurt my nose. Oh, and there's the fans. Yeah, yeah. Very meta. They're working the crowd into the fight. They're making a meta 
joke here, are they not? Shows that meta is on the minds of the movie makers and in the style of this art, this alchemy. You laugh at the obvious meta joke. You laugh at what's apparent and what's visible to two eyes wide shut and thus are led to believe the meta ends there with the joke. But that's only the surface, the exoteric. It goes much deeper, down to the base of the stairs where they're on another grid. Notice at the base of the stairs is where he's going to die. Well, now they're in the kitchen. Or not die, but he's going to lose. Going down to the base of the stairs and relying on it. Whoa, a nasty foreign object. Never really explained what that is. But it sure is something you don't want to touch you. <clears throat> oh, don't! You notice how he beats him? By blinding him. Slows him down, but then he ultimately defeats him by throwing, um, well, into his eyes. Uh, but we're, we'll get there in a minute. In the meantime, Bond's going to endanger plenty of innocent people. He does that a lot. Often gets him killed, too. But it's not to be taken literally, exoterically, any more than seriously. It's meant to be not just satire, but ritual. There's supposed to be symbolic meaning as well as laughs. But serious, exoteric, spy stuff? No. Oh, pro wrestling! Yeah! <sighs> Take that, you English vermin! We destroy you, yeah! <clears throat> oh, Pat Roach's honorary Nazi crusher. He even dressed like Clockwork Orange. Yeah. He tagged him with Vader. Oh, get him in the eyes. See, he take him out with sight. That's what takes down the big brute. The illuminated way of doing things. See things more with your eyes wide open. Oh, and he takes him down with his own piss. A another joke? Only? Or is the joke disguising the reference to the chakra that those with eyes wide shut full of piss will only see? They'll take the piss out of this movie, but they won't understand what waters the chakra tree and leads up that spinal tap, that 33 vertebrae, up the stairs to the pyre mind, the pyramid of the chakra tree. <clears throat> They're like this dude just going by the book. Oh, very British. All the exoteric. Good shots of the military for Kirshner not get any cooperation from them. But they didn't get cooperation from anybody. Even his own team, except for Connery. Well, that's not fair. The producer, I mean. Back to Jack. And the Jewish mafia and Hollywood and movie business they get away with anything and they're used for that so they can make mistakes and yeah no one can touch them it's a military operation I always have to think of Hollywood and that just doesn't mean Hollywood studio productions that means anything to do with the industry it's a military operation unless it's down on the independent level and they, they're just more useful idiots they don't know better but at the top the big stuff yeah, there's an agenda there. Kind of like this. He's off with a suitcase full of the Oscars or something. <clears throat> okay. Go do your sneaky evil thing. Ah, oh, this is so wonderfully 80s with the color tone and the way things look. Especially that opener with that music. We don't get the classic James Bond music. We get Magnum P.I. <laughs> and we're all just getting started later on. We got leg warmers and video games. But for now, just the general aesthetic is so 80s. Oh, circuit board, high tech. But uh, I just mean the, uh, the walls, the carpets, the doors, the feeling. Kind of reminds me of working in the back room at Toys R Us. It's just... This sort of weird commercialized government building right out of the 80s, man. It's when the one I worked at was built. Tacoma Mall. 
Aye, but back to Bond. With his Illuminati symbolism going on here. The symbolic of knowledge. The one eye, the third eye, represents knowledge. But you can't do this seriously. Or you, I mean, you can't just have a laser light on the guy's forehead. You gotta, to emphasize one eye, you gotta emphasize one eye. That's why Hollywood does it all the time with posters and hand signs and things. The point is, of the pyramid, the pyramid, one eye, the, the eye knows more than others do. Although the d knowledge doesn't necessarily, as I said earlier, mean wisdom. This dude has knowledge, but he's just being used. He is a useful tool and a fool for a greater agenda, just like Hollywood. But the audience only sees two of three, eyes wide shut, just like that guy looking straight into the camera. Now, very metaphysical scene. Well, all these things are. They're alchemical films. They're not entertainment. And they're not just ritual in terms of, oh, Mason's had an influence in making it. Look at our stuff. Ha ha. That's an exoteric viewpoint. That's our team. Yay. That's tribal. That's base thinking. The higher thinking is there's a purpose to it. Just like military doesn't do things for nothing. There's a purpose to it. They may waste a lot, but there's still a purpose to it. They have agendas, even if they don't work a lot of the time, but they have agenda. All right, whoosh, let's launch a missile or two. <sighs> Engaged. <sighs> Damn, where's Superman when you need him? This is 1983. He's in business right now. He could be stopping this. Instead, he's wasting his time with brother Masonic Richard Pryor. Building a computer or something. Uh, oh, well. It's in another movie. We're in this movie. And this scene, which I'll take the time to reload my bongs. I don't really want to look at the screen too much. You can imagine why if you know the movie. If you don't know the movie, why are you wasting your first time watching it with me? Anyway, this here. Killing with a snake. The Caduceus. Mr. Brother Domino here may have a trick one eye, but it's a trick. Skin deep. He's not as illuminated as the Scarlet Woman who wields the Caduceus. The Scarlet Woman, potent symbolism. She can be savior or seductress, or both. You know, I take it back about Barbara Carrera and sex and all, and not I'd like to, no, no. Women who love snakes, are that comfortable with them? Women that comfortable with snakes are psycho. Charlie Harper said, she gets, she's into birds or snakes, and she's probably nuts. Although Jessica was into birds, but I thought she was nuts in a wonderful way. I like nuts. I don't like, you know the problem with uh, Kim Basinger's Domino in this movie? No fault to her, just saying. It's just what the script, the content, the role is and all. But she's so vanilla. Actually, in a, well, it's not her fault. It's the way she was born. But Kim Basinger in general is just so vanilla. There's nothing wrong with her. There's just nothing unique either. She's just absolutely vanilla. She's a Barbie doll. But uh, give me someone with something unique, especially psychosis. What did Catwoman say to Bruce Wayne? <laughs> Sickos never scare me. At least they're committed. I can respect that sort of commitment, but most people that just live on the grid doing what the system tells them can't trust them, can't respect them, can't like them, can't get close to them. Even if I have to keep my enemies closer, at least they're interesting. Boring people are a waste of my soul's time on this earth. They don't have to be bad, just don't get in my way. 
bad people take down, yeah. I'm not saying interesting is a free pass or anything, but at least there's something there. Interesting. All right, now let's go get what's even more interesting. The, uh, the MacGuffin of the movie. Well, one, we got the medallion as well, but of the book, of the story, of the rituals. Give you a little time to see if you can see what these are. For re what they really are. Actually, they look like a big shark. <laughs> they're colored in the way they're laying there with the fins. And looks like a big metal shark. Which is, of course, part of the symbology of the show with all the sharks. Ah. But... Just a whole junk of a rocket. Now it's time for something to do with it. I am Supreme Commander of the Spectre, the special executive for counterintelligence, terrorism, revenge, and extortion. And I am also Brewmeister Smith. And even if your secret agent 007 James Bond and Superman team up to stop my missiles, you will not stop me from brainwashing all the people at Oktoberfest. <laughs> ah. Ah. Blofeld talking to a skull. This is 1983, and Skull and uh, Bonesman Bush was running the USA at this time for Spectre as Reagan's vice president. <laughs> and now you have two nukes to deal with. <laughs> Yeah, two nukes. For all the legal rights issues, for some reason, the main plot device, two missiles, something so specific as that did not need to get changed. Why? Everything else had to be. Because the MIE prioritizes the occult. Not silly things like money or laws. They make those. What do they need those for? I mean, listen to this dude speaking of Clockwork Orange. We'll just teach you how the system runs everything, and you will like it. <clears throat> well, now you've all lost control. Now you're all scared. <laughs> According to Kirshner, when this was screened in any country except America, everyone laughed at this scene because they know how real this is. But Americans, oh, we're horrified by this. We Americans are so the modern British. We can't be wrong. With the new imperialists that the New World Order... The New World Order used the British in the 19th century. They used the Americans in the 20th. They're going to use the Chinese in the 21st, and that's what their plan is. But they just use a country to be their empire. And then that country adopts this sense of superiority that they can do no wrong, and it really is silly. I'm glad James Bond is as silly as it really is. I'm glad it's not the serious spy shit that I was always raised and reared to believe. That's from the base thinkers. I should have known better than listening to them. Knew better than them on everything else. Like Disney. Philanthropist! With a private island in the Bahamas. Like Epstein? Yeah. Quite like... It even goes further later in the movie. But we'll get there later in the movie. For now, Miss Money Penny, that's not Money Penny, but she's better than Money Penny because she didn't dodge the draft. He's going to escort Bond to his job, and I can get to my job talking about occult stuff like the flying saucer. 
So, the Disco Valente is openly named the Flying Saucer this time round. <clears throat> the big super yacht. And what a yacht it is. Owned at the time of this filming by one Adnan Khashoggi, a Saudi arms dealer. Working with uh, bad people is nothing new for movies. <laughs> He's thanked in the credits. He ultimately went to jail, too, but never mind that. In jail by Switzerland, the Octagon Illuminati bankers. Yeah. And Largo talks about oil. That's Largo's business. On the surface. <laughs> the exoteric. The surface, like his yacht. While his real business, like that of Epstein or anyone in the New World Order, is what lies beneath. It's the, ex the esoteric, not the exoteric. What lies underneath. The missiles, for example. Oh, and flying saucers. It's what they tell people about while the Knights of the Black Sun, the Nazis, the New World Order, gather metaphysical power right out of Indiana Jones. I mean, Spectre talks to a skull. Bonesman Bush. The same sort of bonesmen that cover up all kinds of things, like, say, if there was ever a real flying saucer. Yeah. And they work with arms dealers, and that's just fine. These days, D Mickey Mouse openly thanks the CCP in their credits. Ho ho! <laughs> then you all buy it. Well, not me. I don't buy it. I like Trump. Back to the boat. The super yacht is really nice, actually. Really super. Gold faucets, gold handles and such, according to Kirshner. And for a while, after this movie was made, someone else who was a fan of this movie, apparently, decided to buy this boat from the uh, Saudi arms dealer after, I guess, he went up uh, to the pr uh, Switzerland prison. That's someone who bought this boat and renamed it the princess uh, who do you think that might be uh, more specifically he renamed the yacht the trump princess who do you think it was now <laughs> uh, hey this was the 80s and it is most definitely the 80s super yachts of ultra decadence leg warmers and later on, video games. That was a great time. He's in the green room. Pay no attention to the man behind the mirror, because you don't reflect. You see of two eyes of three wide shut. The whole mirror that he sees through, think the Kubrickian monolith. Han Solo and Carbonite. Every occult, every Hollywood blockbuster, every occult movie. They're all, all the Hollywood blockbusters are occult movies. Yeah, that's how it works, folks. <clears throat> so anyway, welcome to the 80s, and hello, newcomer Kim Basinger. Nippling out of that those tights, nothing wrong with that. Uh, Kim Basinger, another casting choice approved by Connery. A again, Kim Basinger, back to what I was saying about her being Barbie doll. There's nothing wrong with her. Just nothing unique either. She's very vanilla. And very blonde. I guess that's why Trump liked the boat. You know. And this kryptonite medallion of his. Or this uh, Osgardian MacGuffin here. Pretty cool. Nice little pirate treasure map. All the more occult and Templar tradition. Even more my type of mythology than what I'd expect from secret agent James Bond with his guns and women and cars and women and explosions and women. Now, the James Bond story is far more 
my story than it has been any of those other has-beens that used to be in my life. I used to rant and rave about it, base thinkers. To think I looked up to people who stood so low. I guess like Domino, I had to learn to choose between the darkness and the light. That is her character. And she's well done here. Uh, as in the book, she is the divine feminine. But also black and white. She can go either way. To the dark side or the light. That's her choice. And then the dominoes of darkness fall. The divine feminine for the Templar Knight on his quest. And he is on his quest. Overcoming that base thinking. That's the real... Not the mission. The quest. The mission is the exoteric. The quest is the esoteric. Exoteric is being stronger and having a better gun, and he proves throughout the movie from beating up Pat Roach in the eyes, overcoming him through the eyes, and later on, with this very pen is mightier than the sword metaphor, with the uh, Scarlet Woman, Barbara Carrara. Carrera. More alchemical colors, although there's a little green in here, not that I mind green. But Bond, you got to think about overcoming stuff. That's why Q... The question, or the quartermaster on the pirate ship, back to the Templar tradition, is going to give you knowledge. The pen is mightier than the sword, or the gun, or whatever. And that's how this all plays out. <clears throat> but for those that just think, oh, James Bond, cool, you know, base thinkers, beasts. He's got cool, expensive gadgets. Because they think they could have cool, expensive gadgets and that would solve problems for them and then they wouldn't have to think. The gadgets are kind of antithetical to James Bond, actually, but until you see them for what they are, the symbolism, then they have meaning. Like this one. The watch. Time and lasers. Light and time. Higher consciousness. Breaks the chains later on. Nice little magical bit of symbolism. And this symbolism. Talk about those uh, creative people in uh, the MIE. Welcome to Hollywood. And... Welcome... to the Caribbean land. So, oh, yeah. Hmm. Where was I? Oh, I was in England. But now I'm down in the Bahamas. And now I see a scarlet woman. Center frame. With her arse. And James Bond seems to have noticed it as well. We have so many scarlet women in this movie. Three of them, I think. At least. Here's another one. The Scarlet Woman can be seductress, or savior, or both. It's a she is a powerful occult symbol. And, oh, look in the back, the rainbow too. The upper right of the frame there. Rainbow, the chakra tree, the 33 vertebrae over the rainbow bridge. All the same metaphor of higher consciousness. Later on, we'll see the Santa Maria over Bond's shoulder. Not far off, either. Just a few minutes. A couple of minutes coming up, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Alchemy, you got your black, white, and red, but you don't have your gold. You got no knowledge. Not like Domino with the gold hair. She got her halo on her. This dude needs to go back and wait in line for the Beatles. <clears throat> and being very comical about it. James Bond isn't serious, but he gets to be serious in comparison to people like this. The comic relief, the Sala, the Marcus Brody of the group, although he doesn't get nearly as much screen time. 
In his later years, Henry Jones Sr. is a bit more generous with the screen time. But hey, you want him to make this movie? You want him to come out of retirement and do this? You better pay him a lot of money and give him a lot of screen time to show how old he is. <laughs> in now, Sean Connery, he may be graying in the hair, but... Having just watched all these movies for the first time in a period of a couple of months, two months instead of two decades apart, he's aged very gracefully. Now, of course, he's more into the age I'm used to seeing him. I started watching Sean Connery in movies like Highlander, and later on, Sword of the Valiant, and Hunt for Red October, and, of course, Indiana Jones, but... Uh, when I went back and watched the original, hello, James Bond, like Dr. No, and From Russia with Love, and such, Goldfinger, I'm like, what was I talking about? The Scarlet Woman, that's right. Scarlet Women everywhere, like my life. They're not to be trusted. But anyway, he's, uh... It's sort of like looking at Scotty from Star Trek, where you go back and look at the... You're used to looking at the old guy, and then you go back and look at the original. It looks like a totally different person. But not Sean Connery so much. He's aged very well, very gracefully. Uh, there, in the upper right, there's the Santa Maria. Again, this movie was released on Columbus Day. The good old MIE. They're very aware of the meta levels of things. And they can let everyone else just play if they want to play. Kind of like James Bond, you know, as long as you get the mission done, fuck as many women as you want. Including this dangerous... Well, again, keep your enemies closer. It's more interesting that way. You can always be boring when you go back to England. The rest of the world's interesting. And uh, Barbara Carrera, flirting with you. I don't care if she's dangerous. I think I, that'd be a good way to go. This is my Condor Man crush coming up. When I had hormones at age seven, Laser Lady has an attraction to her. She's cool. Laser Lass is banging. Don't mind V coming up the elevator, never mind. Don't mind the Scarlet Woman putting her spell on you. Don't mind Sean Connery taking his uh, shirt off. Remember, Carrera wanted to do her own love scenes. <laughs> Smart girl. <laughs> and she's like, Yeah, I don't think we need an extra for this. I'll lower myself as a professional actress to get naked on camera in a, a PG movie. Really? This was just before PG-13, I suppose. But, well, she don't care. And he don't care either. Woo! <clears throat> Time for some sparks. She went from Condor Man to this. I'd say she did very well. Uh, Woody taught her very well. Maybe he's better than Bond. Condor Man! Woo! <laughs> Ooh, what was that? I don't know, but it was good. <clears throat> That's what she said. Or is it what he said? Ooh. Mm. <coughs> mm. All right. Scuba diving again. I can't believe Sean Connery, after all the money he's made and all the clout he's got, at his age agreed to... Whoop. You didn't notice her putting that on your... your big cylindrical shaft there? I'd notice her putting her hands on my big sh shaft that blows 
Anyway, you wonder if Sean Connery, man, he, did he, he didn't have to get scuba diving again. He didn't have to get in there with the sharks again. Uh, or the aquatic wildlife. But he did. He got in there with Mickey Mouse. No wonder he didn't mind getting in there with the the aquatic sharks. He, he already signed a contract dealing with Hollywood. And, well, he did call it a Mickey Mouse operation, even if it was a Warner Brothers show. It's still all the business, believe me. They all work together. Hell, we were told that at film school day one. Kids are... I have to say kids because they were that damn naive. They were asking questions and orientation. Oh, there goes a sharky. Like, uh... Well, if we rent props at Warner Brothers, we can't film on the Universal lot. And mentors just flutter the eyes and like, Are you kidding? Everyone works with every th everybody here. It's... There are no boundaries like that. There really aren't. There really aren't. You'll rent props from Universal. You'll rent backings from Sony, and you'll film on a Warner stage. And it's just that's just the routine down there, because it's a military operation, and ultimately they all do work together for common agenda. <clears throat> I said that Sean Connery looks the same. Kirshner might debate that. Um, he said that they had to reshoot all these scenes because the body double looked like Sean Connery 20 years earlier. And they didn't realize to account for his age. And I'm like, damn, that's a lot of hardcore stuff to reshoot just because the body proportions are a little off. I wouldn't have noticed personally, but Kirshner gave us Empire Strikes Back, so I won't question him. What I will question is the script. And I know you have to dodge around all those weird legal issues. You you have to film the book, but you can't film the book. What? And they had to invent stuff that was like the book. But uh, this scene, while cool cinematically, logically, what the hell was Barbara or Fatima... Uh, blush thinking all this is a pretty fancy way to kill somebody wouldn't you say I mean if she can just attach a device to Bond's shaft and he doesn't notice or didn't care why not just attach a bomb <laughs> well because this is fancy because this is a movie and here I spent decades believing these James Bond movies were so realistic and so serious and stuff, I couldn't possibly follow it. One reason I didn't watch James Bond all these decades is because I thought that, well, it was just over my head. No. <laughs> what I know about James Bond now is over the head of every James Bond fan I've ever talked to. <laughs> To a proportion of how Bond deals with the usual fool at the casino. I mean, everyone that's always worshipped James Bond knows jack shit about it. Oh, it's not a fish, it's a Bond. James Bond. It's not Bond, it's Bong. James Bond. We got a party in the Caribbean. You think there ain't some ganja flowing around this place? I still think that I might have to retire to the Caribbean one day. 20, 30 years from now, when I'm old and grizzled and sold some books and got some money, maybe I'll just go buy myself a shack down at Old Port Royal or something. Oh, Bond with the Scarlet Woman again. Looking rather strangely attired for Sean Connery in his ultra stardom. But not when you consider uh, that he's properly attired and prepared for his Blue Lodge initiation. Oh, there goes the Scarlet Woman ascending stairs. going to learn some. <clears throat> oh, sexy. See, there, there you go. She learned too little too late. If she just strapped an explosive to Bond's scuba tank, Spectre would rule the world! Ha ha ha! But no. Um, 
Blue Lodge Brother Mason uh, Bond Connery here is going to uh, send another degree. With, I like the red, white, and blue combination they got going on. Freedom. American colors. Well, British colors, but we're in the Americas. And it's Columbus stuff. It's all... <clears throat> One reason the British and American governments don't... Well, they publicly don't work together, but privately, of course. Well, the publicly they work together. Privately, they... But publicly they don't, but privately they do, but they don't, you know. Whether you're talking World War II alliances with China and Russia, CCP and Soviet Russia, to save the banksters of Switzerland and such, the New World Order's banking scheme. Even when you're talking admiralty law, going back centuries and what really runs the world, get that gold fringe off your flag, you fools. It goes back deeper than that. The red, white, and blue is about freedom of consciousness. We're talking the Masons, the occult, and all that other good stuff. But what do I know? Whoa! Whew. <clears throat> Now we're in France. Monte Carlo. Condorman. France. Departure from the book. Departure from the plane. Departure from the book. There, the action stays in the Caribbean. But not here. The movies have to go from Masonic pirate territory to Masonic Templar territory. <laughs> France. And Felix is black. I mean, he's back. With Bernie Casey as Felix. Now, I love Bernie Casey. Revenge of the nerds. Nerds! I'm gonna get you, sucker. It's my theme music. Every good hero should have some. Like the beginning of your movie, Mr. Bond. Many classic movies here with Bernie, but this is political. This is 1983. Coming out of the 1970s. Affirmative action and all that political crap of the time. Now, I love black people. I love all people. But that also means being fair to all people. All people, including evil old Whitey. Fleming's novels are his novels. Despite all the rights shit, there's no need to change the book like this. This is just politics. I understand the super complex rights issues. They were limited on characters, but changing characters for ethnic casting is purely political BS. They do the same shit in Casino Royale decades later. <laughs> one movie they moved from France, and this one to France. If anything, Bernie should have been a character in the Bahamas. How the hell is an undercover agent in France going to blend in like... He's tall, black, athletic, manly. Doesn't fit in at all in France. Fucking political movie making. It's all fucked up. But Bond, he knows what he's doing. The MIE know what they're doing. The Illuminated Knight. In an L, godly, vaded position. Emphasizing one eye to see better with. Indeed, to see what others cannot. But what is hidden in plain sight? <sighs> huh. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Bernie's going to get him some of that peekaboo, too. He's illuminated, too, symbolically so. The flying saucer. God, they just hide it in plain sight, don't they? Everything. From the elevated vantage point in the cool, weird orange house. Just like at the beginning of the movie, but now Bond's better got his house in order. <clears throat> cool weird orange house in order I like that weird orange house I looked it up on Google Earth neat place 
No history. I looked into it, but it's got symbolism we'll get into later. Is that... Uh, there's probably a lot of the little harbors that look like that and the French Riviera, but... I'm like, where's Lawrence Jameson having breakfast now? <laughs> I mean, Sir Michael Caine. Sean Con Brother Sean Connery, the man who would be king. Peachy and Dravit. It's another movie that follows that Templar tradition. Steve Martin, he knows what's up. He used to play chess with Kubrick. All of Steve Martin's con man movies are very alchemical. The Jerk, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, Leap of Faith. He, he, you watch those, and I got commentaries for him. He knows what's up. He gets it right. Kubrick was going to... What am I looking at? Yeah, Kubrick was uh, going to cast Steve Martin in Eyes Wide Shut instead of Tom Cruise. He knows what's up. And I think Connery knows what's up. Is he getting uh, Michelle Bulge in his pants there? <coughs> I mean, a Michael Sitaro Bulge there? <laughs> I would be if I was in here. Maybe not with the... Uh... <sighs> I don't know, though. Again, we got uh, Barbie doll here. All those women, are, they're nice, but they're also plain Jane. And I like an athletic woman. Give me some curves. Give me some muscles. Give me some something unique. Give me some unique hair, cheekbones, something. I hate to say it, because I like, I like him, but... I do believe that Kim Basinger is such a Trump beauty. Blonde hair, proportioned, but just... Yeah. It fits all sensibilities, I guess. Uh, oh, she's a hotel room. She's a nice hotel room. With some overpumped lips, my God, she been blowing on Mary Jane more than I have, or what? She hadn't gotten to Bond Connery yet, and then she later end up with poor with Alec Baldwin, the poor thing. She went from Sean Connery to Alec Baldwin. I mean, did you ever? The Hunt for October was a good movie, but you chose the wrong leading man here, honey. Well, actually, she couldn't choose him. And every scene, with, I understand, where there was nudity, such as this one, or especially the sex scenes with Barbara Carrera, Sean Connery's wife... It's odd to think that Sean Connery has a wife, and he was married all these years, but he did, and yeah. He does, I should say. I don't care if he's in the other realm, it's eternal. But whenever he was doing all his James Bond stuff, she was right there behind the camera. <laughs> I bet she was. That would have been really weird, being married to someone who was the, the world's biggest sex symbol. That, I mean, under trust aside, understandably she wanted to be there when... But what a what a weird life. I guess they kept her quiet over the years. They don't want to ruin the image. There's a lot of money at stake. And a lot more than that, too. Well. Mmm. <clears throat> M. Ha ha! 13. M. Isn't that Bond's boss? Yeah, that's 13. All back to that. Occult coding. O coding. Oc coding. Like Octagon Switzerland. Ooh. She kind of liked it. But uh, there was a total stranger just having his way with her. Yeah, she liked it. But then you know, she hooked up with Largo. Okay. And now Bond's going to go hook up with Largo in his own way. Gonna go play games with him. Have some innuendo with the old Largo. And of course the Scarlet Woman has to be on the hunt. 
as we enter into the casino of casinos. Uh, note the alchemical colors, black and white, red and gold. Welcome to the Casino Royale. And you can welcome to my fist in your gut, and Nazi guard. And I can welcome you with your own Das Luger! Yeah! Tja, ever the enemy of the Templar. Damn Nazis. I hate these guys. Spectre. Tja, well, you have Das Luger. I have Cigar Case with funky 80s button on it. Aha! And you, eyes wide in the dark. You know nothing. But Jambon does. He's going to ascend more stairs and more stairs and then enter into the room of alchemy. The colors. You think scenes set in France would have more of a blue color palette? Blue and yellow, but no. It must be the alchemical colors of the quest. The Templar. The Lodge. And true it is. This scene, not all these scenes, but this the floor, the gambling floor, is the real Monte Carlo Casino. Royale, indeed. They went and filmed there. Awesome. I mean, it's fitting, isn't it? It's even like metaphysical. It's even like ritual that like, well, Bond begins with Casino Royale in the books. And as far as uh, Sean Connery, the original Bond, this is uh, bringing it back to the beginning. We first hear him utter that classic line, Bond, James Bond. It's in the Casino Royale, basically. And that's where he returns to. The books aside, the quest on film this is his coming full circle with the divine feminine with the halo of her head and all pure and she will make the right choice turning from darkness she will make the right choice and reflect she will make the right choice and enter the video arcade god I love the 80s mm -mm -mm. I do owe you an explanation. My name is Bond, James Bond. Wow. The final James Bond film. Really, given that it's Connery's last. And it not only has a video arcade in the Casino Royale, but that line, the line, Bonding with the Divine Feminine is right here, in my world. Could I have Matt DeMille affect the father of Indiana Jones any further? I'll drink to that. Oh, nice juxtaposition here with the Beast Thinker. Yeah, you're going to lose the game, buddy. And we are going to win it with our red and white alchemical uh, transformation. God, could James Bond be any more my story? Unless maybe they were playing Dragon's Lair. But that was too new. This was filmed in 82. Dragon's Lair wasn't out yet. But at least there's lots of neon green amongst the games. Mm-hmm. James Bond is so much more about what I was into than any of my friends that weren't into it. They were into Bond, didn't know what Bond was into. <sighs> Too good the wannabe Bonds. The wanna Bonds of Zoe Feist failed to stop me. <laughs> you did not pay attention to my super secret 
time-twisting technology that wasn't so secret. You were busy, too busy telling me about how you knew all about Bond, but in the end, I had to break that Bond and change it into something more my... to make my own game. I'm the Game Master. ha <laughs> Yeah, I gotta say, uh, as much as I like Largo the Pirate from Thunderball, and as much as this guy reminds me a bit too much, it's too accurate, too real, look at those mouse ears, kind of hidden Mickey on his control bank. I gotta say, I love this Largo's style. I love his very stylish, polished wood, elegant, video game table setup thing here. Boy, the world went in the wrong direction after the 80s. Whatever timeline we got on, Doc, it was the wrong one. We used to do things so cool. Now everything is such shit. I mean, why the hell isn't Xbox or anyone create their video game with that good old... I mean, where, where is a, the Spectre villainous game table? I told you Spectre's where the gaming's at earlier. But, and look at the table he's rocking. This is just for one game. Now, granted, this is back in the day when video games were new and they might entertain them seriously being in a casino or uh, substitute like a pool table, perhaps. It was, up, it was new, it was upscale, it was novelty, it was expensive, but... At least they did it with style. It was like when TVs were new. They didn't just buy the set. It came in a polished wood cabinet, you know? They did things uh, better back then. They put care into things. Even the villains. But not anymore. And this ain't even a video game. That's the exoteric. Again, obviously this is symbolic of so much. Sean Connery's final movie, and he's playing, I mean, his final James Bond, and he's playing video games. <laughs> what is that symbolic of? But Spectre's already won. Now, obviously, they wanted to make money as well as other things. It's not that important to them, but they, you want a movie to be successful. The people consciously, exoterically making the movie on a day-to-day, -day, from the director down, they do want the movie to be successful. They want to make money. So, appeal to the kiddies. Replace the usual James Bond card scene. He usually plays cards with the villain. He did especially with Largo. Replace that, the, the poker game, with a techno one. Bond is still doing his usual thing. His character doesn't change at all. He's playing the meta game. With cards, I've described in other commentaries, it's uh, about, well, it's really about the same thing here, reading your opponent with uh, through a language of symbols. In cards, it's more traditional occult symbols and numbers, but it really comes down to the same thing here, reading your opponent. As a poker player, Connery learns the tells and weaknesses of others at the table. With the video game here, he's doing the same thing. He's uh, playing the meta game. Like Ian Fleming did with the books themselves, and Hollywood and the MIE did with the movies. They don't show you their real strength. Bond here is feigning weakness. As soon as he got the electrical jolt, he's like, oh, okay, I know how much I can take. Right there, I don't think that was what he could take. He's letting Largo think that's what he can take. But then he can take Largo. It's the same as in a poker game. Get your enemy to lower their defenses. Feign weakness. Find the enemy's strengths. Then win the game. When you want to. Whenever you want to. On your terms, not theirs. Not when they want to. See, he knows now. He recovered from that very quickly. Largo should be suspicious, but his ego, Bond understands ego, he's got one himself, 
but he sees that in other people. He can play that. Ego is a dangerous thing for someone in power to have. It's the easiest way to make a mistake. You're human. You eat, sleep, and shit too, just like everyone else. People can get your goat. They can get into under your skin. Psychology is a powerful weapon that costs nothing and anyone can learn to wield it. And uh, people like Largo are so, like people in Hollywood are so used to having people around them that just all day long. Their guard is naturally down. Bond comes in, he's like a shark that smells blood. He can easily get this guy. And he's gonna. And I, I like how uh, Barbara um, Fatima is watching this. She's a hunter. She's a huntress. She loves the, the thrill of the chase. All these attempts to get Bond and not really getting him and just being on the hunt, whether she wants to catch him or not. Well, in what way she wants to catch him. She's watching Largo on the hunt now and knowing. I bet you she already knows that Bond's outgamed him and she's just watching it and appreciating the good sport. <clears throat> Too bad there wasn't a story arc where she, like, turns on Largo for that. I mean, Bond did it to Pussy Galore, but... Ah, uh, well. Ah, uh, she still goes out as... A, she goes villain all the way. I can respect that. <clears throat> Yeah, she can probably respect this. Yeah, this is where she decided she needed to be Bond's best. <laughs> she has to have a piece of this action. Someone took it to Largo, and he had to let go of his shaft. His joystick, basically. <laughs> yeah, she liked that. And I think uh, Domino likes it, too. Everybody likes Sean Con Bond Connery, huh? Ah. <sighs> Uh, I kind of like that game. I like Largo, too, and I like his game, too. I Largo, I like you, and your little game, too. The metaphor for life, the, the game. But it goes deeper. The occult, remember. The game of life. Bond, the Templar Knight. In the alchemical lodgings. Um, <clears throat> ascending stairs. It's centered in his circle. Of the sunburst. Bond never loses, he just said. Especially when he is centered, balanced, with his divine feminine. Well, damn right he's not going to lose. You've already won the game of life at that point. Now you just have to play it out. And not lose it. Like Largo, who had it and lost it. He's losing it now. Especially her, a point made later on, her being the most precious thing, and he loses it, and then he loses it, <clears throat> and maybe he boozes it. No, that's that's James Bond. He's already boozed it. <clears throat> nice dancing, but you still look like an ice cream cone. Uh, this is really nice. Of, it's a nice cream cone for him to tell her this. Oh, it's in the middle of everybody watching you. Your brother's dead. Don't break your concentration. Don't break your stride. <laughs> <clears throat> Couldn't have told her this in confidence some other place where she might not, like, just collapse? What if she just collapsed from shock? But I guess Bond likes to play it dangerous. As does her. Maybe more than he does. I think she likes Bond more than him. But he needs her. <clears throat> and he's on to her. He knows she really wants him. And she's going to let her hair down. And go down to the base of the steps. This is a problem our pro wrestler made earlier. You go down to base thinking. Un unlike those centered in their circle. And you're going to lose. Bond's going to win again. The Divine Feminine, which Largo, masquerading in white, has to steal. But Bond is sporting the black of the Lodge. And death and resurrection. Transformation and rebirth. And she appears on the surface to be on his team, but we know underneath she's more already on Bond's team. 
surface appearances don't matter nearly so much as what lies beneath. I like those missiles, right, Largo? Or those cigars. I have those back now, thank you. Oh. Didn't bother to check. Never thought of that. You get them. Send more stairs. And back to the cool orange house again. Grab yourself, uh, well, I'll call it an apple. Hold on to that thought. In the, for the moment, though, the stairs again. Stairs, ascending stairs, a very 80s stairs. Very surreal stairs. Very occult stairs. Symbolic of the maze of perception. Finding your way. Eating your apple of knowledge. Notice he doesn't stop eating the apple either. Garden of Eden metaphor. Which is uh, brought full circle at the end of the film. Where Bond Connery finds a new beginning in the Garden of Eden with his Divine Feminine. And I'm not sure if it's an actual apple, but neither is the one in the Garden of Eden anyway. Apples aren't indigenous to that reason. It would have been a different fruit. But you get the metaphor. And you get notice that he keeps eating while seeking, finding knowledge. And while he will find knowledge, that knowledge may not always be pleasant, you are warned about eating the forbidden fruit and the whole expulsion from paradise, which is becoming aware, conscious of things that you must therefore bring to balance. That's why I always say don't deny your dark side or original sin, but lean towards the light, ascend from your beast, basic thinking. Don't fall for Lilith or Fatima Blush here. Lilith in the garden... The temptress, dangerous. I mean, she did have a snake earlier. How much more metaphor you need to see what they're going for? And she's dressed in her alchemical colors, ready for the chase, the finale, for her anyway, at the end of the second act, eyes two of three, wide shut. And now on to motorcycle! <laughs> Spy Hunter, we woo, we 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 All you British slaves, you can pay for this. He's even going to ride a motorcycle upstairs, man. That's his ascension. <clears throat> and uh, I do believe Bond Connery with Indiana Jones had a motorcycle sequence, too. With the joust and all. Yeah. But this, this is getting all the more... Condor man, Condor man, all the this is getting all the more me. I mean, shooting around Monte Carlo, it's the finale of Condor Man with chase scenes right out of that movie. This is the Proknovich. This is uh, cool. What is not cool is the motorcycle, as bad as as badass as it is, it's still bad as it is. It was supposed to have wings. Condor, it was supposed to have wings. Seriously, Kirshner said this thing's supposed to have wings on it, like a bat bike. But there's another of the failures of producers, fartsmen. Another thing that pissed off Kirshner and Connery and everyone else. So this scene is not nearly what Kirshner envisioned. Fucking producers and money men and know nothings and egos, but I mean, it's not what he envisioned, but it's still good. 
I wouldn't have known if he didn't tell me, but you know what? Oh, hell. Oh, well. No wings. Well, that won't stop. Condor Matt. <laughs> Woo! Also, Indiana Jones ripping around the campus in the fourth film. Last Crusade and Crystal Skulls are both taken from this. And The Running Man. Mr. Richards, I'm surprised you're so easily caught. That was only four years after this. Damn, James Bond taught everybody. Oh! Clothesline, more wrestling. With a yard arm. How pirates of... How apartment... How Jessica and I's apartment can you get? And she's even dressed like a pirate. And this was Barbara's own choice of wardrobe here. Um, pretty nice, huh? Yeah. Her choice for her big scene. Well, probably the scene with the Bang and Connor earlier was the big scene, and you know what I mean? But this is the big death scene. This is the big dramatic scene. This is the big movie scene. This is the end of Barbara Carrera in this movie. The finale, the final fate for the femme fatale, Fatima Blush. Blush, meaning not embarrassment, but meaning fire, or to burn, or in the esoteric sense of light, to look, to stare, to see. And Fatima? daughter of the prophet Muhammad. Tears of Allah. <laughs> Plot point of the movie. Not in the book, but courtesy of the MIE exclusively. Fatima Blush. The daughter of illumination from the gods. The scarlet woman of the new world order is about to to burn because she is obsessed with the sexoteric beast thinking at the base pleasure and conquest most basic beast desires and thus she does not see what Bond sees now this is some crazy Bond bitch business demanding his endorsement that I'm the best Bond ever had now, that's worthy of her character, but I got to say one nitpick. Would have been better if Bond had suggested the endorsement. That would have made the use of the pen much more clever. But having her suggest it makes it rather inconvenient he even has the pen. Or, do, or does it? Because <laughs> that's exoteric, it's not important. Who gets their pen out first? The real interest here is the metaphor. The pen is mightier than the sword. Or the gun. Symbolically, intuition is mightier than base thinking. She has a bigger gun. So what? Bond has a bigger brain. Woo! And she went poof! They were right! And the man who would be king. Bond Connery make love to her and she go poof. And, and that was really cool. And, <coughs> and this is really stupid. Felix showing up. This is done much better in parody. At the end of I'm Gonna Get You, Sucker, just go watch it. 
Now, that... I love Carrera's character's ending. But I... I love the meal, but not the dessert. Okay, go Rocky, go Apollo. I don't like Felix coming here. That that totally invalidated Q's gadgets. If Felix could have saved Bond at any time, there was no need for the cool exploding pen being mightier than the gun sword, other than the metaphor itself, which is why it's there. But exoterically, that's some bad writing. You totally undid your setup. But hey, at least a black man football hero stood by while a beautiful young woman was needlessly blown to smithereens. God, I love the 80s. Oh, well. Farewell. Fatima Bush. A blush. blush. Now I'm blushing. Uh, and farewell to the character of Carrera. I'd much rather look at you than Kim Basinger for the rest of the movie. No offense, but as long as I gotta be tortured, I'll deal with my 80s leg warmers on Barbie. I guess there could be worse things to be looking at for the next hour or half hour, however long. Whoop, little Indiana Jones nod there. They're always playing back and forth. <sighs> like how casually he's caught and welcomed aboard as a prisoner. I was actually confused when I was watching this because Largo's so casual about it. But this goes back to James Bond being parody. I mean, if this was a serious spy movie, you'd just shoot him. Right now, you just shoot him. And really, from the opening scenes, the first minute of a Bond movie, you can't take it seriously. I never even take it so seriously over the years. That just shows how much their eyes wide were wide shut. Uh, welcome aboard the Trump Princess, Dr. Jones Sr. Welcome to my life. Hey, but this ain't got nothing on the Santa Mary Janie. I'll tell you that right now. I outraced Largo in the last dimension. Think they could have a meta movie mixture <laughs> with different Largos from different dimensions? Or were the Largos doing the same plan like the Gruber brothers from Die Hard? Just one after the other, dealing with the same dude. Uh, I don't know, Largo is so nice about it here. He's too nice. I, I really was confused if Bond was captured. Until I realized that the black dude wasn't welcome on the white boat. And it was setting sail, and he's like, damn it all. So, okay, Bond must be a prisoner. And now, uh, Largo's doing the, the Blofeld thing. He's villainously monologuing you on your his, the tour through the heart of his ship. The thing a villain should never do, but he's so confident. He's so confident, so uh, comical. Klaus here is a, a fine actor, but, you know, the more I'm seeing him, with, especially with that haircut, they should have cast Brother McKean, Michael McKean, Mr. Green, the Masonic Machine. Oh, he'd have been great in this. Just this snarky wise-ass. God, he looks like him. Doesn't he look like Michael McKean? He'd have been a great asshole, billionaire, philanthropist, and uh, playboy villain. But Klaus is good, too. It's all good stuff. Good ship, too. Very 80s. I love it. Very Enterprise D. <laughs> state rooms aft. Yeah, yeah, state rooms aft. Small country, large country. You know, what I... What I really want to know is how the hell did this movie get a PG rating with Kim Basinger wearing that top? I mean, look at that transparent top. Look at it. Look. It's not that I'm complaining, mind. I mean, though she is blonde, the least attractive of hair colors, she, she's still plenty pretty, but PG... 
PG. Hmm. Yeah. In pink. Gee, she's getting more Barbie. By the moment. And now we're getting more Rocky Horror. Ooh, the Rocky Horror ship. James Bond ever go there? Think Frankenfurter would try and convert Bond? Think he'd succeed? Do Try and do the pussy glory to him? Oh, this is going to some weird places. Let's go back to the safe room of Osgard in, in the 80s. Got an uh, 80s jazzercise workout room on board Trump's princess pirate ship, huh? With an Osgardian green room. What are the odds of that? Seriously, of all the things I talk about, Matt DeMille affecting, twisting time to where James Bond is so personalized to my lost lady love with birds and pirates and such and treasure maps and magical Fantasia medallions and now he's got the Osgardian green room aboard his specialized Trump-owned flying saucer. Did I mention the Santa Mary Janie earlier? And I haven't seen this movie until the 19th of December 2022. It's not really based on a book. None of this stuff that they're putting in is in the book for legal reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaking brain lubricant. My brain's overthinking. Now, something else is leaking now. Uh, depending on who you're talking about. Now, uh, Largo or Bond or Domino. But you notice how... Uh, okay, Bond, clearly he knew what he was doing. He guessed the mirror was there. Exoterically, he's a smart spy. So what? I expect a spy movie to have my spy be smart unless it's an outright comedy. What's interesting about that whole mirror sequence is that Bond, he's more illuminated. He reflects. Largo doesn't. He smashes things. Bond finds secret doors of perception. He sees things others don't see. He reflects. He finds his way. He ascends. The mirror did not fool him. It did not conceal things from him. He went through it like you would go through the door of perception. He's not one of the beast thinkers outside Kubrick's monolith. He reflects, asks the question, and the door of perception opens. Unlike Largo, who has to keep smashing his reflection. <clears throat> Which is a beast's behavior. Now he doesn't reflect. And Bond is in the God position. Symbolically, he's of a higher mind. Those who think they are illuminated may have the knowledge but not the wisdom and the self-mastery to act that way. And Largo's clearly dramatized that. Kirshner knows how to direct those things. He gave us Empire Strikes Back, for goodness sake. <clears throat> now, uh, where we're going now this also confused me they're all just playing along like it's clue <laughs> except this time he did do it i'm the one that did it here's a clue for you the turkish temple not unlike epstein's own personal sanctuary another philanthropist from the caribbean working for space Victor. But, as I said in Thunderball, and Dr. No, because he's comparable, it's not that Epstein was in business back in the 60s, or even the 80s, although Jis Lane was getting started, I was telling you earlier. You know, there's all kinds of people like this. All, they've worked for the New World Order or the power throughout history, not just recent times. They had different names in the past, different titles, but the same sort of person. In the in the old days, it was the merchants. Now it's the 
the big corporate uh, businessmen and philanthropists and whatever in the old days it was the merchants and the philosophers and whoever covets the power and manipulates the masses and acts like they're better than they are uh, as soon as you saw this thing you know it was getting smashed <laughs> I was just waiting for it a good way to build up a scene though anyway uh, I wonder how many of these props they had for however many takes probably just one or two but this uh, location is not a set this is a location this ain't place ain't fake uh, the foundation Euphorose, as in the red, de Rothschild Villa, Ile de France, Cape Ferrat, and I don't care if my American accent sucks. Uh, it's a Rothschild house. Not that such a thing is unique, they have houses everywhere, but could this get any more New World Order here? Odd filming locations, fellas. I mean, uh, I think that the producer would have something to do with that. Well, location should fall to the art department. I know how that goes, but I also know how producers have an agenda and don't care if it's your department and your job and your resume and your work. No, it's, uh, they have their agenda and they're going to film where they want to film. Speaking of agenda, for those that still follow Plato's Cave and believe what they're told and all these social justice Twinkies that these fools and tools for the new world order all you from sad friend shithole and lost angels all the way up to seattle you're all bitching about how we want to get away of the rid of the constitution and have uh, sharia law no you don't <laughs> but keep doing what the new world order tells you skulls and bones right bush i mean blush Skulls and Bones, courtesy of Spectre. Very New World Order style, this finale to Bond's adventures. And Bond is in chains. Metaphorically as well. Like corporate chains. They got y'all in bondage in Plato's cave. Bond needs to find a way to break out find his way out of Plato's cave, break the chains with what? What do you think he breaks the chains with? Knowledge. Light. Freaking laser beams. Of course, after he has his uh, egotistical exchange with the, you gotta have the alphas here. You gotta have the gods dueling and I'm more illuminated than you. No, you're not. You're going down to the base of the stairs. Into the shadows. <laughs> From the light. Yeah, you're going down, dude. You're going down. You can't see it. You work with those that covet Sharia law here. Yeah, this is all the... Once you get rid of all the, the MAGA hats and patriots... And you welcome Sharia law and all that into your uh, left coast uh, cities here. This is about how many rights your you women will still have. And by the way, you're all women. Uh, the Arabs and the Muslims, they have like two genders, man and woman, and only one of them has rights. Freaking laser beams. <sighs> Got to find your way out of that prison with light <sighs> knowledge <sighs> and it takes time light and time breaks the chains higher consciousness gets you out of the true prison Gets you on to more like a Templar, a Crusader. And what is a Crusader known for more, even more, than just uh, 
breaking the chains or getting out of the cave and having higher consciousness. It's about the grail, the holy grail, the holy girl, the divine feminine. Not quite too respected by Sharia law, but for the Templar Christian crusading secret mason man, <clears throat> well, he's got to go on a crusade and uh, rescue that divine feminine. And that's what we're going to do while the villain makes a getaway on to new Horus lines, for, he thinks. But that'll catch up with them. Oh, you don't see nothing, base thinker. You're willingly going into a prison. Like so many people going into the movies thinking they're just movies. And there's people that know more than you do. And they're playing with you. <clears throat> oh, you just had to look, didn't you? Ah. Palouche. That's a risky move there, Bond, but I guess desperate times call for desperate crusaders. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I love this moment. Just whoosh. No fucking around. <laughs> <clears throat> Although what he's wearing could use an upgrade. His wardrobe looks a bit Mr. Rogers here. Oh, you all going to bid and buy her like property. Yeah, this is all the rights you liberals are going to get if you actually get your way. You might want to rethink, the, but you don't think, do you? Leave that to the higher-minded man who doesn't need so much a glamorous exoteric surface. He just needs a horse. Get back on the horse. Get on that road of adventure. On the quest. Rescue the damsel who's pushing that PG rating. Uh, isn't she? And not even in a good way. She's not quite that good looking. She's just plain Jane. She's not bad looking, but... She's going to get a sunburn out there, actually. Well, and the chase is on. Dun, 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 dun. And this, in the original storyboards... Kirshner had a jousting scene in London as the opening scene of the movie, the Indiana Jones opener, the, th the teaser, the throwaway adventure. But it was too expensive, so it didn't happen. Producers! And instead we get this compromise. However, Connery would get that jousting glory, but six years later with Bond Jr. on the Last Crusade, jousting the Nazis, uh, you know, at the checkpoints, jousting on motorcycles even. He gets the motorcycle scene and the jousting scene all made up at once, which is why Spielberg and Lucas did it, because they grew up with James Bond, so it's all about the same quest. And when they make nods and homage to previous films, it's not just to those films exoterically, it's to the quest. We heard you. We see you. We've got your symbols. We got it. Even we don't sink. Even when this is a new horizon. We will swim. Just like the Templar. The pirates. The Templar. And the Founding Fathers. Which they have to save later on. I mean, it's America that's the big target towards the end, ain't it? Well, they played for America at the game. And they're going to blow up... Oh, D.C. That was one of the two. Tower. Missiles. <laughs> what they really are. Oh, ba-boom! Ah, uh, you didn't give me time to reload yet there. But that's Felix and company. So that's not me. I don't have to do it. Okay. <clears throat> More Pirates of the Caribbean action. Cannons and forts and... More Caribbean crusading. Essentially. And... More of that symbolism that's beneath the surface of appearances. And more alchemical colors. 
proper colors for a Templar and safe, friendlier lodgings? <clears throat> With his divine feminine. <clears throat> and you know, you think there'd be protocols aboard a military vessel, but it's a Bond movie. <clears throat> and as this is the last Bond Connery movie, the classics. I'm going to take every opportunity to say, again, go, going back 40 years to when I really cared about movies at all, and, oh, Indiana Jones and Star Wars and Dark Crystal, everyone's like, oh, but James Bond, but that's all like politics and real stuff, it's over my head, I can't keep up with that, cars and guns and women and explosions and women and cars, and it was never about any of that. My focusing on Indiana Jones and all my silly stuff, my role-playing games, my Fantasia, my Pirates, my Disney, this is all what James Bond is more about. Or at least it is now, after I used my evil white privilege to build my evil Tesla time-twisting thesis. Hey, I had Sean Connery for class, I was educated by the best, so I made James Bond more my story, that's the mystery of it, and for my holy girl, my divine feminine. And either that or... The whole world just seems to be about me. Not sure which to hope for or not want there. I think I prefer the former, though. Because I did it myself. Well, had some help, but I still had a hand in doing it. <clears throat> All right, now uh, we're reading old pirate maps. I feel like I'm playing Sid Meier's Pirates. I feel like I'm going through the lodge rituals again. I feel like I'm playing G.I. Joe again. She got herself some proper G.I. Jane wardrobe, and our brothers here are properly attired again, just like uh, earlier on when he was wearing his blue denim down in the Caribbean. Properly attired, got to go through another degree here, another ritual. Well, maybe not fully properly attired, we don't see the feet, but the blue workman's clothes is your masonry degrees, your basics, one, two, three. The secret underwater doors, no alien activity or unidentified moving objects flying or submerged or otherwise. They never do that. No, it's just a big doorway off of Zuma Beach <laughs> outside L.A. All kinds of tunnels uh, inside Sad Friend Shithole and Captain Nemo knows them all. Yeah. But you guys don't know anything here, do you? Shouldn't you have already done that? Mapped all this out? Jeez, what's on with, with you guys? You're supposed to be Johnny on the spot. Now I'm wondering if Johnny just won't give up the pot. Get on it. Get it done. Chop, chop. You're done by the book. You Brits. You bloody limeys. Get it done. Oh, wait. There's American people. Never mind. Shh. There's a CIA. Oh, there's a New World Order. That's right. David, want to get the job done? I don't know. Well, here we go with the Captain Nemo. Actually, this is looking more like the Matrix. Ooh. I'm going to go visit Davy Jones or Dr. Jones. This is a uh, new spooky underwater Templar tunnel. Always got to have the Templar tunnel for our knights on the quest. Whether the quest is, again, it's like the UFOs, whether it's sea, air, land. They get the knights in the air. Mm. They flew a horse a few minutes ago, I guess. They can get in the air. Fly dragons, maybe. Or just... Oh, wait. You think I... It's not like I hadn't watched this movie earlier today. Right. <clears throat> Our heroic knights... Uh, 
There's other ways to go through the skies. <laughs> There's other ways. Yeah. Our heroic knights getting very high on some very smoky cylinders, it looks like. Are those UFOs, or can I... I think I can identify them. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, I think I know what's going on here. Let's see. <laughs> and they're like, it's chariots of the gods. The aliens have returned. Duh. Like a slight redesign. These weren't quite what they had in mind. More producer problems, but these are a last minute art department prop thing. But I think I could improve on the design. Uh, slight change. I like the cylindrical smoky thing, but it needs a little modification. Nah, we'll get there though. Right. First, we got to get into the water to get there. Blah, blah, blah. We must go through ritual rebirth as ever, through the Templar Tunnel as ever. I'm going through a lot of weed as ever. This is fun. Well, Sean Connery's Templar last quest here. Got to do it right with the Templar sacred secret herbs that aren't so secret. Search with light. In the secret cave. All the more ancient mystery quest tradition. Not really secret agent stuff. More a pirate cave or an Indiana Jones cave or something I'd write in a hundred of my adventures without ever having read Bond or even seen it. Bring up the coffin, the shark, the crypt, the symbol of death. All you bad guys in black, bring it up the linear shaft. You don't seek to go through the tunnel to be reborn or create, you seek to destroy. <clears throat> Might want to turn off those lights, guys. But we're getting into the badly lit finale. According to Kirsch, who hates this final sequence because of the lighting. And I have to say, when I was watching it, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, this looks hokey because of the lighting. Otherwise, it's fucking awesome. I mean, uh, well... It doesn't get much more Indiana Jones than this, does it? <laughs> Does it, does it really get any more Indiana Jones, Templar, occult, mystery, Masonic quest than this? This is James Bond. We got the Templar Tunnel of Ritual Rebirth, complete with water, leading to the inner sanctum foretold in the pineal position of the fireplace in his proper alchemical lodgings, the gateway to the ancient world, Plato's cave, literally, uh, physically, metaphorically, metaphysically. Are there any Masonic mystery traditions we're leaving out? All Bond needs to do now is find the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, wait, never mind. This is 1983. Sonny Boy took care of that a couple years ago. Uh -huh. <clears throat> ah, this, this is just such a great ending, at least, uh, but for the lighting. The concept, even the, the, the set is great, but unfortunately, I, ironically, what's really lacking here is light. <laughs> or rather, there's too much light. Exoteric light. Um, that's what Kirshner said, too much light. TV lighting, basically. It makes it look like a set. Looks like a Star Trek set from the 60s.
or even the 80s we hey we, we got the enterprise d earlier now we got this the cave set that they reuse all the time uh, Kirshner said the lighting makes it look like a set i agree he said and i agree this should have been lit dark and spooky like like the well of the souls in raiders of the lost ark this is more like the crappy grail temple from the end of last crusade I wonder if that was deliberate by Spielberg as like an homage to this another one but a hidden one there's your holy grail yeah that's one reason I did my thesis on that movie was I thought the sets were lacking in that one especially the grail temple and this is probably it was done deliberately so based on this <clears throat> Maybe I'm just seeing things. Maybe, but maybe I could be mistaken, but didn't James Bond Jr. do something like this just a couple of years ago, going for that Ark of the Covenant thing with Jig Bob? Yeah, I do believe so. <clears throat> There's just less snakes in this movie. At least the uh the animalistic kind of these guys may as well be Cobra troopers. <laughs> Oh, oh, they're not using laser guns, though. They're using real guns. Okay, everybody's deaf now. I guess James Bond is getting older, though, and probably losing his hearing anyway. He don't care. And Bernie's already retired. And everybody else is going to die. Ah, fuck it. Everybody starts shooting. It's the 80s. God, I love the 80s. Everybody just starts shooting. Okay. <sighs> Zippity zap zap zap. Careful with Mr. Spock. I don't know. Whatever this new G.I. Joe vehicle is. We st oh, the G.I. Joe nuke. How come they never made that as a toy? That would have been fucking cool. Cobra steals a nuclear bomb. And they're not afraid to use it. And that's what Spectre basically is. And that's what this is. Cobra. Cobra. Crashing through the water comes a fearful blur. It's Cobra. Cobra. And now Destro's gonna go make demands. Just Commander will fuck it up. Okay, Bond. You go through another rebirth. How many have been in this movie? I forget. Well, no, the women you fucked. There should be at least as many rebirths or whatever. Or rebooms. Woo! He's Indiana Jones, all right, destroying priceless artifacts, all right and left, getting people and women killed. And bangs a woman, gets her killed. Finds some precious treasure he claims to care about, brings the place down. Tell me this isn't Indiana Jones escaping the well of the souls. I mean, yeah, that movie preceded this by two years, but... But... They all trade and change with each other. They learn from each other. It's one big family. And it includes Bernie. With the BFG! Yeah! of tear gas <laughs> or something else <laughs> oh yeah this here coming up in a moment when he drops into this siote cool stun such a cool thing to do but it should have been in slow-mo with theme music 
Every book good hero should have some. Now down into the depths of the finale of this film, which, that sounds bad, but it's not. It's actually a, well, like Indiana Jones, it ends on a more personal, less epic level. Just people, and thus overcoming yourself, reflections of yourself. Actually, <coughs> I'm really glad this finale does not go the way of Thunderball. Uh, with either the mass scuba fight or the Disco Valente chase. I was wondering, going into this earlier today, this being such a, a remake of Thunderball, really, how were they going to compete with those classic scenes? Were they going to redo them? And would they inevitably be compared better or worse? And thus one film inevitably suffers? I liked what they did. In, in this case, as often in creative endeavors, limitations are a benefit because it forces you to be creative. And in this case, because they couldn't do those scenes for copyright reasons, I think it's better that they avoided them entirely. That way there's no comparison and each movie has its own story to tell and one doesn't make the other look worse. Instead of a massive... Uh, big underwater brawl between G.I. Joe and Cobra we have a, a gunfight in a temple and instead of a, a high speed uh, flying saucer chase with the Disco Valente hydrofoil we just have it come down to hero versus villain mano y mano <sighs> And woman. Nice to see uh, all in a domino make the right choice, you know what I mean? Well, you know what I mean? This shouldn't be your first viewing of the movie, and if it is, what's with you? But thanks, anyway. <clears throat> so anyway, we have... Uh, it's mano y mano. Because it's not just man on man, it's woman on man and not in a good way and there she is nice to see the nice innocent female lead in the movie pick up a gun and ruthlessly get revenge god I love the 80s <clears throat> I'm starting to sound like Vince McMahon better get out of here I'll be bending to that side of the source. I'll get the bends down here. We need to go bend uh, around in bed. Yeah. I think I'm around the bend. I think I'm over the bend. Yeah, I'm over. I'm back. Come 360 like her. In a vertical way, not a horizontal way. Although that's fun too. Uh, now we have the Garden of Eden. With Bond in a pool, he ends at a beginning, a place of rebirth, a garden, as usual, as a cult tradition. You know, metaphorically, he never stopped eating that apple. He never stopped acquiring knowledge. Seeking new horizons, banging new, finding new uh, symbolic divine feminine, <clears throat> and having fun doing it, as life should be, running around in the garden. Fun, me, this ending. Connery had an alternate ending in mind. Instead of the wink we get in a moment, he thought he could pass Roger Moore on the street. But once again, the producers said no. So instead we get this. 
Nice little bookend to the beginning, how he appeared out of the jungle like Adam and Eve, and now we be, or Adam, and now he's found Eve, and we return to paradise. By a wink of one golden eye. One eye ending inside the logo of double O for her eyes only. The occult, the sorcery, the masonry, the mystery. My story. After so greatly Matt DeMille affecting Indy's legacy. Stranger things have happened. No, Dr. Jones? Never say never. But for Connery, this was indeed never again. Connery was going to make more Bond films with this new company, not Aeon. But producer man Schwarzman, the power of the Schwartz was not with us. Bond Connery said nope and only weeks before the deadline to secure the rights to the next film was up don't fuck with bond connery yeah. although you know i'm glad that they went that way i would not i do not i'm glad i cannot see an aging Sean Connery James Bond. The others I don't care about, but I do not want to see Bond Connery just getting older and more pathetic. One last hurrah is fine. Especially when you're in those golden years where you still got that inner strength. But um, I wouldn't want to see it go on beyond the one last hurrah. I wouldn't want Connery to go the way of Indy or Hogan or Flair or something, you know. Furthermore, this being the last um, Bond, it opened up more roles for Connery. If he had been busy doing an older Bond, we may never have gotten Ramirez in Highlander or Henry Jones Sr. in Indiana Jones. And fine, third, finally, most importantly, Connery should have only made seven, 007 films. The Chakra Tree, Sean Connery. Unlike those who sought exoteric mastery, he found esoteric mastery of self. Come full circle. Yet there is always another Horace line another golden eye reflecting from your own pyre mind never say never you don't know what you don't know and i'm glad this was the last one and it was still a good one maybe not the best but neither was crystal skulls but it's still good i still like it and it's still a worthy ending to well never say never but for now, I will say this to my holy girl, the god Jessica. Never say never. You know what I say? Shmula vu.
four, 